Hello guys, and welcome to Matt's Pima. Today is a question and answer video to all those questions that were asked to me last year. Instead of you seeing my face, I decided to do a point of view video, which was from my drive in Cyprus a few years ago in the Mark 7 Golf 1.2 TSI. Remember, if you have any questions, please leave them down below and I shall try and answer them next time I do a Q&A. Also, apologies in advance if I pronounce your name wrong. First question is from Ben Harworth. He says, Hey Matt, do you know where to get BMW's genuine fuses from? I have never actually bought BMW fuses for my old BMWs, but as electrics are becoming more complex, I would go to the dealership or a company who sells little fuser fuses. BMW used to use Pudens fuses, but Little Fuser bought the, out the company. Sorry, my <laughs> German is awful. Sorry. G10 Jiva 4 asks Is your BMW F20 X Drive as it seemed to drive just perfectly in the snow? Hello. Um, no, it's a standard rear wheel drive. It's all down to the tyres that I am using and the great driving aids that my car has. People forget that many of the cars in Russia are old rear-wheel drive larders and those cars on good tyres can get anywhere. Andy Campbell, Sam Sutcliffe 2140 and Ivan and also a few others have asked what tyres are you using for the winter? From memory they are Nokian Norban 4s which are studded tyres they seem to do the job perfectly, as you will probably know from my last point of view video. Also, they seem to be quite cheap at about £40 each. Nicola Koliv asks, What tips do you have for F20 owners in the winter? That's a good question, and actually I shall make a dedicated video to this, as you're not the first one to ask. So thank you very much, and hopefully that video will come out soon. Ben from the YouTube channel Planet Auto and a few others have asked when am I going to clean my car? <laughs> okay, I know my car isn't the cleanest in the videos. Um, in winter it's hard to keep the car clean due to all the black sludge everywhere. I will clean it again after this video. My cars in England always used to be clean. It's quite frustrating really. Jokes XXL asks do they use road salt or gravel in Russia? Right, to be honest, I'm not too sure. I think it's just been changed due to it being dangerous to children and animals. I think it is now a mix of salt, marble chips, calcium chloride, formic acid and other chemicals. But I'm not too sure as my Russian is not the best. There are so many lorries working together to make this process work. Um, yeah, sometimes you see about um, four or five lorries in a row preparing the road for driving on. It, the roads get cleared pretty quick and as you can see in my videos, they're easy to drive on. Amarado921 says, Happy New Year! Here are a couple of questions for you. First question, should the oil be changed on the ZF gearbox? The answer to that is yes they should be changed. The gearbox should be in good condition and below a certain mileage before you actually do this process. If you are outside of the certain limits then it may be riskier. I made a video a few months back based on the ZF8 gearbox. Um, it should tell you on there um, the answer for you in a bit more detail. Thank you. Next question from you is what would the risks be of a stage one on a 116i or is it better to upgrade to a 125i okay i have seen many people do a stage one on their m13 engine i don't think they've had many issues to do with the engine one friend of mine with the youtube channel bimmer belgium has done this upgrade i am sure that michael will give you many details of his experience with the stage one upgrade. Uh, the reason I say this is because I've never actually modded any of my BMWs in the past. As for the N20, 
I will leave you a link down below. I have also made an N13 video on my channel. The comment section on the N13 video is very interesting and I recommend that you go and have a look. Regular viewer EE asks, Hi Matt, I would like to know why it is forbidden to clean the engine compartment in your city. Is it just the engine compartment or is it forbidden to clean the whole car in general? Hello EE, it's great to hear from you again. Um, basically, um, it's forbidden to clean the car yourself, the whole car yourself, with water. They say it's down to pollution. They don't want the chemicals getting into the drains and water system. But I also think it's to do with keeping businesses open and to keep the people employed. For me, it's extremely frustrating, as I used to have a valeting company back home in the UK. I am allowed to polish my car and use waterless products, but if I want to use water, I can't do it. If I do want to clean my car with water, I have to go all the way to my country home, which is a pain in the bum. Transaction 2005 asks, did you ever change the turbo O-rings and have you ever experienced any oil leaks from these O-rings? At this moment in time, I haven't had any issues with my turbo. Then again, my mileage is still very low. I've just turned over the 45,000 kilometer mark. I am hoping that I won't need to actually do this job. Not soon, anyway. <laughs> Sorry, it wasn't the answer you wanted. Binny George asks, when do I need to change the timing chain on my BMW 114i? It's done 56,000 miles now. So you have the N13 engine like me. Um, BMW says that the chain should last the life of the car. I would not follow that rule though. People usually change the chains about 90,000 miles. Some may snap before that, some may last much longer. The most important thing you can do is to keep changing the oil on your engine. I change mine every 5,000 miles. Fingers crossed it will work for me. Theo to doors, sorry about that. I, um, he asks, I am thinking about buying a 116i 2013 with 136 horsepower with 70,000 kilometers. What is your opinion? Is it a reliable car to buy? And is it fun to drive? Thank you. As an owner of one, I have had one main issue with my car where I didn't drive it hard enough and the injectors became jammed. Due to that, I had petrol mixing with my oil. I have made an N13 engine video and it would be worth watching and checking out the comment section down below for my viewers. I have never driven a BMW which wasn't fun to drive, but the older BMWs from the 80s and 90s were more exciting in my opinion. Ashley McConnell asks, does a replacement AMG battery need to be registered in a 2014 F20 N13? If so, what is the best way and tool for doing this job? Yes, the new AGM battery will need registering on the F20, so it knows that the car has a new battery. If you don't do this, the car will keep on charging up the new battery the way it did with the old battery. In other words, sending too much charge to the battery, which can do a lot of electrical damage. For example, it can mess up the alternator system. If you keep the spec, of the battery is exactly the same as the old one. It will just need registering. I have a Foxwell NT520 Pro, which should register the car's battery for me. It will not code the battery for me. It only will work if I keep the exact same battery. If you completely change the battery spec or the type, you will need to code the battery to the car. For this, I think that a Carly may allow you to code the new battery to the car. I have never used a Carly though, so it will be worth asking them directly. Aaron D'Souza asks, why are there lots of companies from the Soviet area, such as Gaz, Uraz, Vaz, and Zaz? It does seem quite popular that there are many brands with AZ at the end of the name. AZ. AZ stands for Automobilny Zavod, which basically means automotive factory, automotive plant, etc. The first letter out of the three letters 
is basically the city name where the brand is from. So Gaz is from Gorkovsky, Urez is from Ulyanovsky, Vez is from Volsky, though some people say Volga, and the Ukrainian company Zez is from Zaporizhia. As I said before, my Russian accent is not very good. Another thing that's confused me with Russian cars is the Soviet number system. If you would like me to do a video on that especially for you, I will do that for you. It's quite interesting, <laughs> but yeah, not all my viewers would like it though. Thank you all so much for your questions. I really appreciate it. If you have any more questions, please leave a comment down below and I will get back to you. Anyway, have a good weekend and take care. Goodbye.